We are continuing on and we are up to Saif Yud Aleph speaking about a very interesting concept. Maran writes, Avarian Shavar Gizrata Sibur or Shavar Avera Im Loni Tuhu Nimna Leminyan Asara. Imagine if you have an Avarian, a person that does Averot, he's Jewish, but he is not keeping up the standards of. Um, of the Torah because, you know, he can't control himself. He knows that's Avera, what he's doing, but he can't control himself. He's not going against HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's not doing it to anger Hashem, but he's just, you know, he has the knowledge, but he um, cannot control himself. If the Bedin has not put him in excommunication in Nidui, then he still counts the Minyan Asara. You can still count him as Minyan. Now, this needs a lot of explanation, says the Mishnah Burai in Sifkatan Membav. O Shavar Avera, Katava Primigadim, he brings from Primigadim what we just mentioned now, Tavka Avera Shavar Letavon. That's only if he has done an Avera Letavon. Because of his desire, he couldn't control himself, he couldn't withhold. So that's how the Avera happened. But if someone does it because he doesn't care, someone that doesn't care also has Tava. But the problem is he doesn't care. It's not that he really, really, really wants to control himself, but he can't. And he lost the battle. There's not even a battle really there. He doesn't really care. That person... Says the, the Mishnah Barah, even if it's only one item, one avera that he does lachis, that he goes against the shev, he doesn't care. Or shehu mumar leavodat gilulim. Or if he is mumar leavodat zara, for instance, someone that has become Baha'i, someone that has become uh, one of one of the religions that are not considered uh, monotheist, right? It, it's not a belief to one. One God that is considered Abu Abu Zara or the Halal Shabbat, or someone that is Mehalal Shabbat, the Pharisee, which we have to discuss. All this is dropping bombs here because each one of these you have to discuss nowadays. Somebody that doesn't keep Shabbat is that considered not counting as by the way, it's only Shabbat that's like that because if a person doesn't keep Shabbat. It, a mumar lechal shabbat farhesia is considered like a mumar bekola Torah kula. If you don't keep shabbat, it's like you don't keep anything. The inok akum is halacha is like that of a non-Jew with a no mistaref, and he's not counted as minyan. So that's one sentence of the Mishnah Bura, which needs a lot of explanation. Now, the Ben Ishchai in Rav Pe'alim writes. That even if, if a person is over on many mitzvot, he transgresses many different mitzvot of the Torah, but it's all of them is because he can't control himself. He's still not up to that. He, he battles with it and he falls. Even though that is multiple different mitzvot that he's challenged with, still is considered Israel Gamur. He's considered a full-fledged Jew. He is counted as minyan. He's not rebelling. And again, it's not one of the fundamentals of, um, of faith. Someone that is Mechal Shabbat is a fundamental of faith. Someone that doesn't believe in Hashem, in one God, that's a fundamental of faith. That those things, even one, um, you know, one transgression, basically, you're, you're out. You know, one, one strike, and you're out, basically. So even if a person is, is, is doing multiple Averot, but all the Tavon, Says the Ben Ishchai, um, you are still considered part of the Minyan, but if he gets to rove of the mitzvot of the Torah, the majority of Torah he doesn't keep. And well, the majority of Torah now it is not 613 divided by two. Many of the mitzvot of the Torah are not applicable because we don't have the Betamik Tash, because we have the RSSL, we don't have, um, you know, living in RSSL. Many of those that um, would apply the time of Betamik Tash are not there, but if again he is. Um, transgressing the majority of the mitzvot, that person already says the Menishchai is not uh, considered part of the minyan, 
And Kafachaim basically follows his Rebbe, Ben Ishchai, was the Rebbe of Kafachaim, the Rebbe Chaim, Yaakov Chaim Sofer. He also follows in that footstep, and um, he passed in the same way. Um, how about a person that doesn't daven? He doesn't daven, he doesn't say tefillah, right? Now, if he doesn't do it, if he does it because of te'avon, because he says, I'm busy, I'm you know, waking up late, that's all te'avon, right? That's all because of desire to other things, either desire to, to, to sleep more or desire to take care of his things. He's prioritizing his life over um, his spirituality or because he's just lazy, right? Either of those, there are palim rights, that, that's also like a regular overa vera. He's doing an avera. He knows he's doing an avera, but he still is considered part of the minyan when he does come to the minyan. It's not that because he doesn't daven, we don't count him all of a sudden as, as a minyan. Now, a mumar uh, lehachis that we said it does not count, even if it's one mitzvah of the Torah that he wants to um, deliberately rebel against. I think Avachayim explains it that this is this has to be in a way that he wants to rebel against the Torah. It's not that you know he, he's just lazy to do it. He wants to rebel against the Torah, against Hashem, or in a way that it comes across as him not believing in the mitzvah, not believing in the mitzvah. So ah, it's garbage. It's old old caveman stuff. Whatever else it may be, if it doesn't believe in, in, in the authenticity of Torah and the eternity of the Torah, that is um, already a, a, a big rebel. Now, if you have a, a person that has a kosher, gla kosher, but Yosef sandwich in front of him, has pork, and the same, same price, or both for free, right? And he, he chooses to eat the non kosher because he doesn't care, really. He does it because he wants to show that he doesn't care. He wants to show that the Torah is not important. That's considered a rebel. That's an act of, of, of um, merida to the Torah. That's considered already a mumar le bemezid. It's basically mumar lahachis. Now, how about a person that is mebatele mitzvat ase? He doesn't do one of the positive mitzvot. He doesn't put tefillin on, right? And he shows that he's doing it because he doesn't care, right? Your local uh, Chabad comes to him. He has time. He's doing nothing there. He says, Let's, let me put on feed for you for a second. As in other things, doesn't, he doesn't care at all. And it's not because he's embarrassing from the people. It's no, no, for, for no specific reason. It's just because he doesn't care. So that, he, he's showing that he doesn't care and he's, you know, he is rejecting the Torah, he's rejecting Hashem, or he doesn't believe in, in the mitzvah. I, say, I don't you know, put a box in your hands. Like, you know, you're sending people to Mars now, and now you're, you're worried about putting a box, a black box in my head. You know, we, we're dealing with other black boxes, you know, so to speak. Is that so called, right? The black box? The plane? Yeah. yeah, black box. We're dealing with other sophisticated black boxes, you know. So that 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 person is, you know, it's considered shalom, is. for no good reason he's rejecting the Torah um, and, and the mitzvot. And um, again, Rapalim, the Benishchai, the Kafachaim, both of them write that um, this person is, is going to be in the, in, considered a mumar is, even though that he's not saying that, that I want to anger Hashem. You don't find nowadays, people just don't care. You don't find people who says, I want to go against Hashem, I want to anger him, right? You know, the person that rejects it for no reason, for no reason, it's not because of Tava, is, you know, it's a misfad say that he, he wants to, um, you know, he just, I don't, doesn't believe in the mitzvah, doesn't believe in the mitzvah at all. So that person says the Ben Shai, if Eino Ma'amin be mitzvah, Ben Shchai says that that's also considered a mumar is and is not mistaref le minyan. So again, that's something to be careful about because this does happen sometimes, uh, depending on, on what your crowd is. This is unfortunate. It used to be at least in the Sephardic community, this would never happen. 
for someone that doesn't believe in the Torah, it's just unheard of. Like everyone would kiss it and would bow to it and so on. But again, it's, you know, the times, the, the times unfortunately in the Galut have, uh, have developed in a very negative way. And that's something to be mindful of. So same is another, an, another example, someone that doesn't daven because he's mezalzel to the mitzvah, right? He doesn't care about tefillah, he's mezalzel. He disgraces the concept of tefillah. It's like, well, whenever I go to show, maybe I do it as a social uh, experience, but by at home, he, he doesn't care for davening. That would also be considered, says the Ben Shai Mumar Lachis. So all of a sudden, now you have a whole group of Mumar Lachis, people again that don't necessarily um, um, go against you know, the Davka, go to, to McDonald's to eat pork. But nevertheless, if the guy doesn't care about davening, even on Sunday morning, he has time, he's no job, he's no work, he's, you know, he's awake on time and, and whatnot, and he's, uh, you know, just doing things, keeping his, doesn't daven because he's not important for him, doesn't daven because he doesn't care that um, person is mezalzel, and therefore he is, um, considered a mumar in, in, in that sense, this is again the chidush of the Ben Ishchai. So that's as far as the first concept is, um, is concerned. Now, we mentioned in the Mishnah Berurah that if a person is mumar la'avodat gilulim, if a person um, has changed his faith, so to speak, and, and has gone to a Avodah Zara cult, then he is not considered a part of Minyan anymore. So Kavachayim explains that this is only if a person has done Avodah Zara, which is Asur from the Torah. Not just anything that is not Jewish is considered that now he's not considered part of Minyan. If he joined, let's say, a cult that doesn't really have any Avodah Zara in it, but it's not Jewish. So that doesn't necessarily render him um, a, like a goy that would not be considered part of the minion, but nevertheless, he has to be something that's a, considered isura right? That that you get mitat bedin for doing such thing, right? And Chachobadia writes the same the same thing that um, not every thing that we call Abu is is considered considered. Um, Avodah Zarah as well, it has to be something that you have. For instance, someone asked me about, um, there's a machloket, whether or not you could turn a church into a um, into a Bet Knesset, right? Machloket, like Ram, Chayadam, it's not, it's not a, a, a simple thing. And um, this specific place was a church of Scientology. So the church of Scientology is, uh, you know, it, it's a very uh, Sophisticated political move of, of having rich people uh, families from them. There's no, there's no cross there. There's no real um, Christianity involved with it necessarily. Is is a is, is a is a tremendous um, technique of, of fundraising from very influential uh, and rich movie stars and other people. So it has a history of uh, you know FBI being involved with it. So a very interesting uh, background, but. It didn't become a, you know, a religious thing that they actually um, exercise Abu Dazara necessarily. So, you know, that's uh, when Nesach Israel was the Church of Scientology before they 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 bought it and they you know, unrex it and then they turned it into a uh, a shul. So that's um, of course a little bit different than having an actual hardcore Abu Dazara, but these are things that a person has to discuss with the, their local orthodox mora to uh, determine when, when someone is and when someone is not. Now, the last piece that we discussed over here was that a person that's mechanal Shabbat, he's not considered um, part of the minyan. Now, if, if a person does chilul Shabbat because of parnasa, how about that? He says, you know, my, my line of work is 
everyone comes on Shabbat, so therefore I have to open on Shabbat, so I open on Shabbat. What is that considered? Hmm? Well, it's of course breaking Shabbat. The question is, if that person now is not part of the minyan, right? So, um, imagine if, if he doesn't go on Shabbat to work, they'll fire him, right? So that's for Sora Chavis Parnasa. It's really, you know, so it's not so passion. The um, Ben Shai writes in his Chubot Raf Alim that even if he he needs the Parnasa, is the Sora Parnasa, if he is Mahalal Shabbat, even that's not Lachis, even though that he doesn't, he's not trying to anger Hashem, is Tavon, but Shabbat is very different than other mitzvot. Shabbat is a core of, of Yiddish kind of Judaism. And therefore, even if you have a Mumar Avon, says the Ben Ishchai, in that way, uh, it will become it will become Pasul uh, for Minyan and the Mechal Shabbat. That's only one time, even though he did it publicly, but he did it just one time. The Rapalim, Kafachaim, um, and Chahobadia write that he also becomes a Mumar. It doesn't have to be someone that does it constantly and every day, even with one time, the Yomer writes that this becomes um, a Mumah. He discusses this in Siman Yud Aleph over there, and he is stringent, just like the Rishchai is and Kafachaim. So we're talking about something very severe, very serious when, when we discuss Chidu uh, Shabbat. We're not talking, of course, about the Chidu Shabbat Beshogeg, this is something that the person knows that Shabbat is Asur, and he does it still because, because of his, uh, his needs, right? How about if you have only a rabbinic thing? He does all the, the orayitas is careful. But he does Chilol Shabbat, the Rabbanan. He says, I don't drive, I don't cook, I don't, you know, turn on the, the, the lamp, I don't turn fire. All the door writers, I don't do borer. That would be that, that would be a difficult one. If a borer, many people don't even know what it is. And it's very hard not to have a person that transgresses the halachot of Shabbat if he's not a Tamil Chacham. Right? The Chaim writes in the Hakadamat of Gimel of the Mishnah Bura that if you don't constantly review halachot of Shabbat, certainly if you don't learn them well, you'll come to do a Hilo Shabbat almost every week. Certainly when we talk about Yachot Borer, which very easily, very easily, you, usually other things, if you slack off, you transgress the Rabbanan. Muktzeh Rabbanan. Borer, you move one inch, one iota from the Alakha, and you could be right away, and it's a, you know, it's a minefield. You know, you, you step one, 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 one wrong foot, and, you know, it, it blows up, basically, because entire things dealing with biblical prohibitions. Now, so someone that doesn't know it, Fine, so he's Beshogeg. But uh, someone that keeps the Doraitas that he knows, but he transgresses the Rabbanans, even though that he knows those the Rabbanans are Asur. Uh, so the, the Rav Alim and the Kafachayim, um, they both write, this is a different Shuvah of uh, the Benish Chayim, in Chere Gimel of, uh, of Rav Alim. He writes that this is not a Mumar. You could still count him as minyan because he's he's not uh, like the same kind of chaim that says even mumar for Abu Zarai has to be some someone that uh, that does Abu Zarai with the oraita. So here's the same thing that uh, for for Shabbat it has to be a level of transgression that's considered the oraita. If he keeps all the oraitas and he slacks off in the rabbanans, that is not um, is not going to render him asul for being counted as the minyan and Chacham agrees with that as well. Now, what? Still, still, of course. But not every Avera makes you not count as a minion. Mukta. No, touching things that are, are, are considered Mukta and Shabbat, like, you know, uh, moving, yeah, mo moving things that are asked to move on Shabbat. Moving his uh, passport, his, uh, you know, his, his phone, Whatever I think, things that are things that are are, are considered halachically um, not 
movable on, on Shabbat, that would be one example, right? That would be one example. There are many examples of, of rabbinic things that we keep on Shabbat. That if, again, he's, um, if he does them, he's not considered Mechal um, Shabbat in that level that would render him invalid for being part of the media. Okay. Now, even if a, if a person is doing something that's a Torah transgression, it is Torah transgression, um, but is not a part of Torah transgression that gives you a chiyuv mita. A person that transgresses Shabbat with the oraita, right? We will get mitat bedin. And Chal Shabbat Fasia would 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 get uh, would get uh, you know mitat bedin. So not every transgression gives gives that level, right? If you don't have, um, for instance, the isur of mechamir, the Gemara discusses that in the Gemara. Um, what exactly the level of, of the isur is if if a person is uh, um, guiding their animals to to do uh, to do work and so on? So is that considered um, an isur do right that the person gets? Uh, Capital punishment? No, he doesn't. So, therefore, says in, in that sense, you don't get uh, the status of not counting as minyan unless it's a biblical isur, which when a person does it, he will get um, the consequences would be mitat bitin. Now, how about the Mechal Shabbat? We said all those things. Now, how about the Mechal Shabbat in our time? Many other people were Mechal Shabbat in our times just because they never grew up in that way. They may know that the Frum people don't do A, B, and C, and he doesn't care, but it's not because he's a bad person, it's because he grew up with parents or with system of education that mocked this upbringing, that made fun of keeping the mitzvot. And therefore, he is like a Tino Kochenish Bu. Right? It's like a kid that you kidnap, and, and that kid, what would you expect from that kid? Right? So, Chacham and Sirah Shaul writes that they still don't count as minyan. Because nowadays, the world is so sophisticated, everyone knows about everything. They grow up, you see, there's, there's a million ballet shuba in Eris Israel, right? There's a whole lifestyle of, of, of Jews keeping the mitzvot, it's not something foreign to them. Um, if they don't know Shabbat at all because they, they grew up in, uh, I don't know, some, some random place without any Jewish explosion and, and, and education, that's a different story. But if they grew up in a regular city, a regular city, Los Angeles, New York, uh, Denver, you know, all, all the regular, regular cities that have a Jewish community, even though that they were not growing up as from, but they're exposed to it, and now they, they basically are choosing to reject it. Therefore, they're considered still Mechal Shabbat and Farisiyah. But this is, you know, Chavadiyah writes, if you're in a place that there is only a little bit um, of, of Jews, there's not, um, not a lot of Jews there, and you don't have a proper education, in that case, um, you, could, you could be lenient, says Chavadiyah, and, and consider them part of the media. And this is a bigger talk. We just started it, and we're out of time. Bezat Hashem, we'll be continuing this, whether or not Mechalil Shabbat nowadays uh, are considered part of the Minyan, can we count them as Minyan or not? This is something bigger that Bezat Hashem will continue discussing in the days to come.